This is how to use the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro for biometric measurements and their functions, the accuracy, and comparisons to other devices. Now since the Polar Watch is tracking my heart rate continuously, I want that to be the same on the Samsung, so I'm going to go to the settings, I'm going to go to Samsung Health, and in the heart rate it says measure continuously, so that's what I want. Okay. Now I need to get a face that shows my heart rate, so go to my wearables, watch settings, oops, watch faces, and I really liked this one. Let's customize it. Complication 1. Sure, monogram, whatever. Complication 2, let's do the EKG. Then Complication 4, actually I'd rather that one be the heart rate. And then I'll make Complication 3 my blood oxygen. Alright, now we can see I've got my EKG over here, I've got my blood oxygen, and I've got my heart rate. So I've got all the settings I need, and they're both constantly reading my heart rate. I did learn while wearing two watches at once that it is important to select in the watch settings for each of these devices which wrist you're going to be wearing the watch. That's going to be important for accuracy of your measurements. So what I'm going to do is put on my oxygen sensor, which is closer to an actual medical device versus just a wearable, and it says 77. This says 76, that says 76, 77, 78. So they're all within about one heartbeat, 78, 76, 78. So they feel pretty good that way as far as accuracy of heart rate when it's reading. And that's what you have to do is just watch your heart rate and it'll eventually fluctuate. So let's say I want to go to settings for sleep. If I go to Samsung Health, I do have heart rate measured continuously. I want blood oxygen during sleep because that's going to give me the full sleep analysis. Snore detection, I don't know if I need that or not. Now, oxygen sensor is a little interesting. The Polar does not have an oxygen sensor. The oxygen sensor obviously does. 96. So let's see what the Samsung does for it. Let's hit the oxygen sensor. I'm going to hit measure. Move your watch higher on your wrist. Place your elbow on a table. Hold your wrist near your heart. Start measuring blood. Okay. So I'm going to do all those things. Then I'm going to hit OK. And it says 96, which is where 96 versus 97, 96. So the blood oxygen sensor is actually pretty decent. And it still says 78 versus 78. So that's pretty impressive. This morning I got a 95 from the Watch 5. And it's a 95 on the Pulse Ox. This is with the elbow resting on the table. Right before that, even with the elbow just kind of resting like, you know, on my leg, it was only a 91. So that whole resting your elbow on a solid surface with your wrist up by your heart is critical. And if you do that, it seems fairly accurate. The next thing I want to try is this EKG since I just checked it with the other device, the Cardio Mobile. So basically I hold it over here. It says inconclusive, and you might have noticed that the heart rate bounced around a little bit. The EKG Cardio Mobile showed it being in bradycardia, which just means it's a low heart rate. But earlier this morning when I checked it, it also said unclassified. I think part of this, it's kind of hard to really say as far as accuracy with this feature because my heart is such a mess right now anyway. Since the heart surgery, it's still bouncing around between normal and AFib and junctional and bradycardia. So 
I wanted to at least try this feature just to see what it does and show you how to do it. I just used the Cardia Mobile to check my EKG. And it said possible AFib this time. Immediately after that, I did the EKG on the watch and it showed inconclusive. So I'm a little surprised it didn't say possible AFib. It has said that before with the Samsung watch. This time it did not. So there's a little bit of disparity between this device and the Cardia Mobile, but to be fair, my rhythm's still a mess, so it's kind of hard telling what's right and what's not. The first thing you want to do is weigh yourself. And for me personally, I do it first thing when I wake up so that I've fasted overnight and I'm going to be very similar each morning in terms of how much food is in my system, how hydrated I am, etc. Swipe up, hit the Samsung Health app, and scroll down until you see body composition. There we go. Now scroll all the way down to the bottom and you hit the measure. Enter the weight that you just measured. Now place the middle and ring fingers on the two buttons. And what it says to do is make sure that your hands don't touch and to hold your arms out so that it minimizes contact to your armpits. Based on that, I also spread my legs apart a little bit just to keep the twig and giggle berries from touching the legs. Basically, any unintended touching of yourself to yourself is going to mess up the measurement. I've tried spot checking this a couple times with an old school set of calipers, which is the only other way I have to really measure my body fat, and they seem to be within a couple percent. The calipers are a bit subjective. It depends on how hard you pinch and everything, but overall, the numbers seem to make sense, especially when you look at my build compared to online pictures of this is what this percentage of body fat looks like. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.